Hi everyone, this is Kyle Wolch with RCR Wireless News, and on today's webinar, we'll be talking to Steve Corcoran, Senior Director of Business Development at Mitel's Mobile Division, about Volti and how one can turn obstacles into op opportunities. These challenges include operations, capex, competition, and time. And now I'd like to hand the presentation over to Steve to discuss turning Volti challenges into opportunities. All right, thanks, Kyle. Well, I think this topic is, is really pertinent. Uh, I've actually been at a, a CCA show today. Uh, this is a Competitive Carriers Association. And uh, really, I think timing-wise in the marketplace, uh, Volti is really changing the game for a lot of people. You know, you can go through and look at the press releases that have come out recently. T-Mobile has said that over half of their calls today are already made over Volti. Um, AT&T has over 25 million Volti subscribers as well. So it's taken a little while for that ecosystem to get going, but it seems to be going very, very quickly. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and move on to some of those challenges that Kyle was referring to. Really, you can break them down into uh, four general areas. You've got the operations and engineering teams, CapEx, new competition, and timing. Let's go into each one of those in a little bit more detail. Personally, I think that this is the, the biggest obstacle is the operations and engineering challenges. Um, most of the smaller operators have very limited resources uh, available to them. They may have a handful of people who truly know and run and maintain the core network. Um, these guys and gals, typically know the existing MSCs, HLRs, media gateways, SS7, forwards and backwards. Um, however, with going to Volti, it introduces IMS technology. Uh, this is a, a much more difficult skill set to acquire, uh, which leaves the operators in, in a couple of different things. They either have to hire new resources that would have those skill set, which one, those are not easy to acquire, and two, um, you know, they may not be able to actually get them on the sites where they're at. We had a, an operator today that I was talking to that was saying he has headcount available, but he can't find anybody who's willing to relocate to the town where they're based. So once again, some real challenges there, not only with the IMS, but also as we talk a little bit later about the virtualization, network functions virtualization, the technologies are, are very different from what the existing operations team know. Um, so as I said, they can either hire them or they have to figure out a way to, to cover this off through their partners. Second thing is the training. Um, if you do choose to go about and, and train your existing employees on this, once again, it is complex. It does take time. But those resources are currently running your existing network, so it's almost impossible to pull them off and dedicate that amount of time to, to get them trained on that technology. Uh, talking about, once again, hiring additional headcount is also very challenging. Uh, when I get to the cost perspective, I'll go into that for other reasons. And the last one is, most of the smaller operators have been forced to really go with one major vendor, just because the complexity involved with running different hardware, software, operating systems for each product that are inside your network. Uh, once again, this is a, a huge challenge and, and consolidating on that solves one problem, but then it also limits the flexibility and, and innovation that can come along later. So that moves us on to the CapEx challenges. To put it bluntly, the existing operators are in a terrible bind they're having to go about and spend a tremendous amount of money on the LTE radio access, and that's typically 90% plus of their CapEx spend, which leaves less than 10% to go towards the core. The real challenge here is that rolling out Volti does not add any additional ARPU. So you're having to essentially build an entirely new voice core from scratch with no additional money coming in. Another real challenge that's occurring on this is that the hardware is advancing at a, at a phenomenal rate. So with Moore's law, uh, everything is still continuing at that pace. And 
by the time most of the solutions and the hardware for a solution actually get deployed and are live in the field, it's very likely that those products are very close to end of life already, which is, is once again, posing some significant challenges there. The last one I want to talk about is really with the, the planning because it's very difficult to go ahead and do that massive CapEx investment upfront, buying all of the capacity that you won't be using for quite a while. And it leads to really lumpy spending. Whereas, you know, most of the uh, commercial people within the operators are liking to have a little bit more stability and ability to know exactly what they're going to pay when and, and budget around that. What's also really interesting though is that the, the playing field is changing. There are a ton of new entrants. Um, I think we've all seen with the Skype, WhatsApp, et cetera, the over the top entrants are really going after a large portion of the value that you're getting from your subscribers today. So th those are known. Uh, they are able to innovate very quickly and bring new capabilities to the, to the marketplace. And, and that's once again, providing an additional stress. But with the introduction of IMS, a topic that's been around for a very long time called fixed mobile convergence is actually reality, becoming reality for the first time as traditional cable operators or uh, fixed operators or even new entrants that have been in maybe the enterprise space, et cetera, are now looking at ways to get a hold of the mobile pie. Um, you know, we've definitely seen a lot of the cable operators who made uh, forays into the MVNO space uh, a year, two, three, four years ago and did not really have good success are now trying to re-engage in that space primarily because of the voice over Wi-Fi technology. Um, you may have heard of some stuff that's called uh, Wi-Fi first, where we're seeing at this point that Subscribers are typically under Wi-Fi coverage 80% of the time and in the macro network only 20% of the time. And once again, they're trying to take advantage of all their embedded uh, access points that they have. The third one I have at this point is, is there's a couple different aspects of it. One is the larger carriers are rolling out innovation at a faster pace. T-Mobile is a very good example of this. Um, once again, they have significantly deployed Volte, but they're also looking at deploying things that use Volte as a building block to provide even additional services later on. But what's interesting with the IMS rollout is that unlike in traditional 2G or 3G roaming where the subscriber comes onto your network, onto your core, um, and, and you provide that service to the roamer, under IMS, the subscriber services and actually servicing that subscriber stays in the home network. And now the roaming network is really being used just as a, an access mechanism to get into that IMS core. What this means now is it's easier for your subscribers to justify going to the big carriers. Um, it, it's a much easier move for them. So that's another thing that has to be looked at at this point. So once again, this is, this is the challenge now is how do you actually compete against some of your very best roaming partners that you've had um, because some of those barriers have, have gone away. And the last thing I'll talk about here is that uh, there are continuing commercial pressers on the data. Uh, you see all that you can eat plans, et cetera. Voice is becoming more of a commodity and, and less of something that uh, you can really use as a differentiator at this point. All right, so the other thing that's really becoming a sticking point for a lot of the operators at this point is the time it takes to actually roll out new innovation to the field. What we've seen at this point is that, uh, once again, I, I don't like to continue using them, but T-Mobile is, is a very key example of this. By rolling out innovation faster, 
you end up getting a uh, mind share from the subscribers as being innovative, bringing the latest and greatest phones and capabilities to the marketplace. And what that does is that really adds to stickiness for the subscriber. Positive churn is good, but the subscriber stickiness is probably the, uh, the, the biggest component that uh, the operators are looking at. The problem is if you are not a first mover, your options on how to fight in that bat in that marketplace become very limited. And really, the only thing you, you have at your disposal that, that moves the needle is pricing. And I don't think anybody really wants to be in a race to the bottom when it comes to you know, getting revenue from your subscribers. So I talked briefly about the, the rate of change. Um, but what you are gonna see now is with the addition of, of the IMS core as a result of the Volte deployment, those major operators are gonna be very quickly rolling out a lot of new capabilities that build upon that. Um, may talk about that a little bit more if we get to the questions period, but being able to look at multiple personalities, multiple IDs, and tying that into advanced messaging, once again, it ends up providing a, a, a much better way for the operator to define the customer experience they want. The last thing on here is to talk about the existing way of deploying networks is very, very time consuming to the time where you would have to procure the hardware on site, go about getting it installed, uh, bringing it up, et cetera. This, this leads to a very long time to actually bring that new capability into the, uh, the marketplace. So uh, there's a lot of push towards things like virtualization to try to accelerate that. And I'll talk about that more in a, in a later slide. So what are the options that the smaller operators have today? Well, it really boils down to they can either go to a small vendor. And when I say a small vendor, this is, can be characterized as typically this is a player who has traditionally gone from the enterprise or the fixed side of things um, versus the, the large vendor who, you know, we can go through the, the normal names here, but these are the, the guys who are very invested in the radio access. They've been doing this for a very long time. And, and basically each one of them has pros and cons that I'll go through here uh, briefly. For the small vendors, the reason they're typically chosen is the first check mark is, is the predominant one. They typically cost less. Um, they are typically simpler and easier to install and to operate and maintain. And as a result, they can be deployed much faster. Uh, an often overlooked part though is the last check mark, which is the roadmap influence. Um, with those individuals, they typically have a smaller market share and, and an operator has the ability to, to move their development uh, easier than with the large vendor. However, these benefits come at a very significant cost. First and foremost, um, they're typically proprietary, and this is a requirement to get that low entry, craw, uh, low entry cost, the simplicity and, and the speed to market. Um, typically, corners have to be cut. They're not completely standards compliant. Um, mentioning before that they come from a fixed or an enterprise background, they're, they're trying to learn mobility on the fly. And, and I think everyone knows uh, mobility is, is got a lot more complexity than either of those enterprise or fixed models have. Because they are designed to be very small though, they also have very limited scalability. Um, they start small and they end small and at some point you have to buy an entirely new system in order to scale if you do have success and, and significant amount of customer uptake. I do want to spend a little time on the fourth one, which is the, the limited innovation. Uh, I mentioning before that in the, in the past, they've had to go with a single operator. Um, if you do go with the smaller vendor, typically your only source of innovation comes from that one particular vendor. Uh, this is very limiting because depending upon their market size and what they're doing, they, 
they typically will not be staying up to pace with the latest standards as well as the new innovations and capabilities that are coming along. Now the last one falls back on the existing being fixed or enterprise. They, they don't typically have true carrier grade reliability with the five nines moving up to six nines if you have geographic redundancy. Once again, they're, they're not designed around that. Uh, this, is, this is a huge challenge. Uh, just personally, I, I know I came from a startup that started trying to sell into the, mo the, the mobile tier one space and then tried to build the carrier grade abilities on top of that. And that's almost impossible to do. You have to really start from day one with a carrier grade product and then build around that as opposed to trying to add that in at a later date. So that's what you get for the small vendors. If we look at the large vendor, you'll see that they offset those weaknesses. Typically they are standardized, um, having IoT with multiple networks with uh, other vendors so that once again, you're not necessarily forced to buy everything from one vendor. Um, you can kind of best in breed solutions at this point. Typically mobile is their strength. Um, we'll get to those vendors on the next slide, but you know, they're typically getting 95% of their revenue from the mobile side. They are scalable, uh, particularly scaling up. Uh, we'll talk about some of the issues that they have in scaling down on a later slide as well, but you know, they, they will not be limiting your success if you do have significant customer uptake. They're also typically future proof. Once again, these guys are, are involved in the standards, they're following them closely, and, and they're taking that and putting it into their um, deployments, and, and therefore their customers have an ability to, to stay up to par uh, much easier. And the last thing there is they do understand carrier-grade reliability because they've been doing that for years. But all of that does come at a cost. This has been a huge issue for a lot of the smaller operators at this point is they can't afford to pay the prices that the, the big tier ones are. Um, those solutions also tend to be very complex. However, getting back to the high entry cost, typically those vendors would be more than happy to remove that complexity at a very large premium, adding to the cost, not only on the initial install, and, and bringing up, but also on the maintenance costs moving forward. They're also typically very slow to, to move and to actually get that innovation into the field. Um, they are going to be directing almost all of their efforts towards their big tier one customers. And essentially, you get what is left in their, their uh, time that they have once they've, they've taken care of their big tier one customers. And lastly, that goes right along with the fact that there is really no ability to influence their roadmap at all. You're gonna basically get what they give you and um, not have any other options at that point. So, what does that look like from a vendor perspective at this point? We do have the, the point solution vendors. I've got just a few listed on there. There's actually quite a few that beyond this. These are just some of the ones that I saw that were in the, uh, the press recently. Uh, Broadsoft, Metaswitch, Takwa Interop Technologies. Uh, once again, there seems to be a lot more that are trying to enter this space as well. And then you have your traditional uh, incumbent uh, vendors, the, the Ericsson's, the Huawei's, the Nokia's. I had to remove Alcatel Lucent, given the fact that they've just been acquired, but once again, it's down now, now down to primarily the big three. Uh, of course, you may have a ZTE or, or a Samsung or somebody in there as well, but it's, it's a very limited list. So when we were coming at this solution, um, the idea really was to go through and see if there was a way to take the positives from the smaller vendors, take the positives from the traditional vendors, bring them together. So for the point solution, once again, the low entry cost, but then with the traditional vendors, having that carrier grade reliability, being able to move much faster, um, but having that mobile expertise where once again, 
it's mobile out as opposed to adding mobile to something that's uh, designed for something else. Being software based, um, it, it's really interesting right now. Those of us who've been in the industry for quite a while that there are these occasional uh, massive changes that occur in the in the telecommunications environment. You can go back to the days when you move from analog to digital and, and companies like Nortel and Lucent came up and, and really made their way. Then you moved on from the fixed to the wireless where companies like Ericsson and Nokia came up and, and did very well while others fell back. What we're seeing right now is two massive uh, changes occurring at the at the same time and this is really part of the the good and the bad for the operators at this point the first is lte and volte require that introduction of that ims core this is really the first time in 25 to 30 years plus that the basic voice core is changing and that's going to the flat all ip architectures the second inflection point that's occurring is the movement of virtualization from the IT space into the telco space. So those two events happening at the same time um, are really opening up and, and allowing some new capabilities to come in. And, and ultimately that is what Mitel is taking advantage of. So I will move on to how does a solution built around these new technologies look and work? So what is the solution? Uh, a cloud hosted virtualized core network. That's a, it's a big mouthful. So let's break that out a little bit more. Why is it important to be in the cloud? Well, in the cloud, you can do a lot of different things, which um, allows you to do the dynamic scaling, being able to add capabilities very quickly, um, to be able to do things at a much faster speed. Uh, essentially, this becomes more of what like the, the OTT players are doing. You're able to, once again, bring that innovation in very quickly um, without having to worry about all of the connections in your own existing network or you know, trying to find floor space, trying to find power, et cetera, to expand your existing facilities. Now, hosted is very interested as well, interesting as well. Uh, the reason about this is we got into that situation we discussed previously, which is the CapEx investment to actually try something new, whether it would be Volte or voice over Wi-Fi, is, is very, very large, at least to do it with the carrier grade reliability that's out there, um, which typically your customers demand. We can get into the hosted, and the hosted allows some very new innovative capabilities. Um, being able to, I talked about the dynamic scaling, but also paying specifically for what you're using and not having to pay for what you might need to use in the future. So I'll talk to you a little about that, but that shifts the pricing model from a CapEx model to an OpEx. Now this isn't for everybody, and once again, there's some flexibility around, but it at least brings a new capability to the table. I was also very surprised uh, while I was at this uh, CCA show, the number of the smaller operators who are already doing a lot of um, having their core network capabilities oftentimes hosted with someone the equivalent of like an MVNE or another operator who may have that skill set that they don't have. So I think in many times the, the smaller operators are, are even ahead of the game compared to the large operators just because they've been forced to do this earlier from a, a cost savings perspective. Now, <clears throat> I mentioned the moving from the IT space into the telco space uh, of the virtualization technology. That's really important, though, that in moving from the IT space to the, um, the telco space, there's had to have been several things to do to build in carrier-grade reliability, uh, which, once again, is, is kind of foreign to the, the IT space having to have those five nines and six nines. But that's, you know, being able to put those, those changes on top so that you don't have any degradation of service or capability when you move to the new technology. Uh, lastly, getting back to the, the hosted and virtualized at this point, that whole issue with the 
operations and engineering teams at this point, how do you keep them up to date on the newest technology? How do you know what's coming down the pipe and make sure that they are ahead of it and able to react quickly? By doing a hosted solution, you're able to take advantage of the vendor's expertise and knowledge. Um, just as an example for, for Mitel, we've done close to 30 Volte deployments around the, the globe. Having that expertise and that knowledge uh, is really invaluable because the last thing you want to do is go around reinventing the wheel, um, solving problems that, that have been solved you know, five, six years ago. Uh, you also don't have to worry about upgrades and things of that nature. Once again, it's all handled behind the scenes uh, and that lets you focus on what you want to do, which is what is the customer experience that you really want, as well as the marketing. How is it that you are different than your competition? And once again, leveraging your strengths uh, as well as the vendor partner. So this is what Mitel has done. We have gone through and, and leveraged the, the best of um, Mitel, as well as the Mitel acquisition of Mavenir Systems, which is now the, the mobile division within Mitel. Um, the Mavenir, now Mitel mobile division, has deployed these Volte networks I was discussing, you know, around the globe with, with many, if not most of the uh, early adopters of the, the Volte technology within the tier one space. Combined with Mitel's knowledge of how to provide hosted services, we, we pulled those together and come up with something called the mobile cloud suite. And, and we'll get into that in a little bit, but it's not just one solution. It is a suite of solutions. And, and once again, this allows you to have that flexibility to continue to bring innovation based on your customer demand, as well as your comfort level with this. The solutions we do have are voice over LTE, obviously the focus of this discussion, um, Voice over Wi-Fi as well. Uh, as I said, this is becoming table stakes now. Um, even operators that uh, previously were very averse to voice over Wi-Fi, uh, I'll particularly call out the AT&Ts and Verizons, um, have added this to their offering because they, they can see now that this is very valuable and, and once again is a customer demand on that. Video solutions as well as advanced messaging. So why mobile cloud suite now? And how is this actually taking advantage of both of those uh, benefits of the small vendor and the benefits of the large vendor? By taking advantage of the virtualization technology, we're basically able to take the exact same solution that is deployed at the large tier one, shrink that down via VMs, onto COTS hardware, maintain all of those benefits from the large operator, but now being able to shrink that down to um, a much smaller package, pre-integrating all of it together to reduce a lot of the complexity, and then being able to do that in a hosted manner or on-premises. Uh, once again, a lot of flexibility as far as the deployments go. But really, this is the first time that the smaller operator is able to get that tier one capability uh, brought in at a, in a manner and at a price point that they can afford. Um, beyond that, this actually allows them in many instances to leapfrog what the big vendors are doing because uh, you're now able to, once again, much like an OTT player, try out new capabilities without that big initial investment. Um, and, and once again, if it works, you scale it. If it doesn't, you can try something else. This is a, a real game changer because typically the smaller operators have lagged the capabilities of the, the larger operators, you know, on the order of 12 to 18 months uh, on most technologies. Once again, you now have that ability to, to leapfrog because Many times, they're actually moving slower now than, than you can. So once again, that gets to the, the risk-free aspects of it. Uh, once again, you can do the geographic redundancy, uh, getting those five nines to six nines capabilities, uh, very highly secure. Uh, and then once again, 
moving from the CapEx model to an OpEx model. Uh, and then not having to worry about the training and keeping all of your operations and engineering staff uh, up to speed on all the new technologies and, and being able to handle what's coming down the pipe. So where this is really interesting though, I, I talked about the speed to market. Um, just as an example, I was, I was at the show today and I was hearing one of the operators, I believe it was uh, the CTO, Stephen by from uh, C Spire, and he was mentioning at this point that through the use of virtualization on one of their uh, RNCs, radio network controllers, they were able to install a, a series of RNCs in three weeks that previously would have taken them three months to do. So now you can start to see how there are tremendous advantages there from uh, the cost, the infrastructure rollout, uh, all of those different abilities there. So the other thing that, that's really important to, to mention is because this is a standardized solution, uh, you are not tied to Mitel or at this point any vendor. You can actually bring in other vendors, best in breed products, other innovation on top of this to uh, once again, flesh out your ecosystem to define the user experience that you're looking for. Uh, I think this is really key because many times there's been the concept of, I really only want one throat to choke because it was been almost impossible in the past to, to get multiple vendors to work together properly. While yes, there are tremendous benefits to having a single vendor, you don't wanna be forced to only go with that vendor. Um, because once again, that is very limiting to your ability to stay current and, and once again, bring that new innovation in. All right. So one of the things that I had mentioned earlier that I do wanna go talk into is sort of what happens if you do deploy Volte? Well, Volte in and of itself is not the end game. What it does is it is the critical beginning building block that allows you to then start building additional capabilities easily on top of. Once you've got the investment and you have the IMS core, you can start adding capabilities very quickly to this. Um, as I said, going through and looking at uh, deploying Volte and then deciding to go ahead and deploy voice over Wi-Fi becomes a very trivial task at that point. You merely have to go through, um, you know, you don't need to have the PCRF for the quality of service. You don't have to uh, really change much of your network at all. The, the PCSCF functionalities and the access SBC functionalities are very similar. Once again, it's all the same core infrastructure. And you may want to go through and add something that would allow you to do uh, utilize non-SIM based devices like iPads, et cetera, doing a simple SIP digest query through a, to one of your databases. So once again, very simple to add that capability in. Moving for, forward, if you wanted to add in uh, advanced messaging, getting in, into the instant messaging, file transfer, video share, et cetera, these are very small incremental ads on top of that first initial investment that you make to get the Volte out the door. All right, well, as I said, I think this is, is really interesting, the, the timing in the industry. Uh, we're seeing the, the voice over LTE momentum growing very quickly. Uh, as I said, I've been very surprised and excited to see how quickly uh, T-Mobile is moving their subscriber base onto Volte. AT&T is following very closely afterwards. Uh, once again, half of over half of uh, T-Mobile subscribers are using Volte today. Uh, 25 million plus subscribers on AT&T is using Volte. Um, those subscribers are going to be roaming. All right, I think I've talked very quickly. Um, Kyle, if we have any questions at this point in time. Hi, Steve, yes. Uh, we had a number of questions come in and we definitely have time for more. So if anyone has any questions, please submit those. Uh, so the first one we had come in is, um, you know, someone was asking about your thoughts on extending this shared network business model that we see in Canada 
uh, where Rogers and Bell share, you know, the same core network to reduce costs. Do you think the same thing could work for small U.S. operators? Well, I think that that's a little bit um, off just because really what Bell and TELUS have done is they're not really sharing the core network, they're sharing the radio access. And that, that is, a, is a very different model. Um, what we have been seeing, though, is uh, you can look at the, the concept in the, the virtual network operator space, the MVNO space, where you might have an MVNE who is then enabling multiple MVNOs. A very similar strategy can be employed with voice over, over LTE, particularly with uh, the hosted cloud environment. So now an operator could build out their own data center. This is not necessarily just a, another, like a small operator. A, a large operator can do this. A, uh, an IPX company, numerous ones of them could utilize existing data center capabilities and then build out unique core instances for multiple smaller operators and, and sort of manage that for them. So we are seeing some of that. Uh, it kind of falls into the model of, uh, as I said, the MVNO and the MVNE model. Okay, great. Yeah, that, that makes total sense. Um, so the next question we got in is uh, beyond cost, is voice quality on Volte and voice over Wi-Fi a concern? And, and if it is, you know, what kind of standard pro protocol do operators use to ensure good voice quality? Okay. So this one, when you get down to it, let's break each of those out into the individual components. Um, Let's talk voice over LTE with quality of service. So voice over LTE has the dedicated bearers. Once again, bringing the PCRF and, and being able to ensure that you provide that same quality capability. What the bigger issue with voice over LTE is, is there sufficient LTE radio coverage so that the subscriber is predominantly staying on the LTE network? Um, if you don't have good coverage and maybe you have a large amount of movement of your subscribers, then you will either have calls dropped or, or there's a technology called SRVCC, single radio voice call continuity. And this adds some complexity. And ultimately, if you have a large amount of this, um, you, you may have some degradation of your customer experience as they're, they're moving between the IMS environment and the circuit switched environment. So once again, there's really no issues from, from a quality of service. Uh, to be honest, most of them are going to be using wideband AMR, or you may hear this referred to as HD voice. Um, that's available on 3G for, for other operators. I think I believe T-Mobile is doing that on both 3G as well as on their Volte network. So uh, Volte is designed to provide that same level of quality of service. Uh, in fact, improved MOS scores than the traditional uh, TDM models that uh, are in the 2G and 3G models today. All right, um, we have a, a few more hold questions. On, hold on, Kyle, I gotta, I gotta answer the second part of that one. So voice over Wi-Fi is interesting because there's been a large amount of debate about this. Um, I've heard numerous operators who have talked about, you know, they don't want to have their voice quality uh, seen as being negative because someone has poor Wi-Fi coverage. Uh, ultimately, that's really asking the wrong question. The real question is, are your customers happy, or at least much happier being able to make calls where they weren't able to make calls before? So it's not really an issue of comparing the quality of service that's there. It's really about enabling something that could not be done previously. Uh, we had a deployment that was done in the UK, and, and when we saw that it was deployed for voice over Wi-Fi, um, feedback from the customer was their, their customer care calls dropped in half. So once again, a significant improvement in experience for the user, and, and typically if they are, do not have a good Wi-Fi, either the, the store or the user themselves will make the investment to improve that Wi-Fi, uh, once again, taking that whole burden off of the operator as well. Okay, I think I answered the two parts there. Was there a third part of that question? Uh, no, I, I think you nailed that, honestly. Okay. Uh, yeah, right. absolutely. Uh, so the next question we had come in, uh, we have a couple. Again, if anyone has questions, please submit them via the Q&A. 
Uh, so as we know, you know, kind of the rollout of Volti is limited, but it's definitely rapid. So what has been the subscriber uptake you've seen for Volti? <clears throat> so the normal path that occurs that we've seen in, in primarily in uh, North America as well as in Western Europe is LTE has to be deployed sufficiently to reach a threshold that it makes then sufficient um, justification to, to deploy Volti. Prior to that, you know, they will be using technologies like uh, circuit switch fallback, et cetera, to make their voice calls over the legacy network um, instead of the, the LTE network. But I think, once again, looking at T-Mobile, looking at AT&T, um, as subscribers are following the new devices, I mean, obviously, when Apple rolls out the next version or Samsung comes out with the next Galaxy version, handsets are being turned over at a much much faster pace. And this is really allowing the operator to, to migrate those subscribers to the new technology much faster because obviously those handsets are capable of doing Volti, whereas maybe some of the older ones were not able to do this. Uh, okay. Absolutely. And um, talking about the capability, um, you know, how does Volti roaming differ from traditional 2G and 3G roaming? So I touched on this briefly, but it really comes down to, in the past, the network that was roamed onto had every aspect of the call on their network. It was going through their MSC, their media gateways. Uh, essentially, all that the, the home network was doing was sending the subscriber's services information to that roaming network. With the IMS involved with Bolte, the model is completely different. Um, typically at this point, you're gonna come into the Access SBC, and that's gonna be in the Roam network, but all the service logic, almost all of the signaling is going back to the home network. Um, and, and once again, that roaming environment now is merely, I don't like to use the word, but a bit pipe for that subscriber's raw data to go back over and once again, have the service provided from the home network. This is a fundamental change. This means that typically the existing roaming agreements need to be looked at differently. Uh, and, and IMS uh, IOTs will need to be performed. We're starting to see this with the large carriers. I think you will see this accelerated. Uh, you know, typically say maybe a, a T-Mobile in the US guaranteeing that they can IOT with their parent Deutsche Telekom in Europe. Uh, Vodafone and Verizon had a tie-up at one point in time. Once again, you'll start seeing more of those, but this will quickly be a pressure point onto the smaller operators to say, if you want to continue being a Roamer partner of mine, you will need to be able to handle those Volte calls where I keep the subscriber on my network, and once again, just use your access. But this also opens up for that smaller operator when their subscribers leave their network and go anyplace else in the, in the country or the world, um, having once again full control of that subscriber's user experience from their home network as well. All right, um, next question we have, have you seen Wi-Fi only or Wi-Fi first operators use IMS based voice over Wi-Fi? Well, once again, I'm gonna come from the, the Mitel perspective on this one. Um, for the most part, a lot of them have been non-IMS or pre-IMS. Uh, what we're seeing now, though, is they are wanting to do that fixed mobile convergence and start consolidating their cores down to a single IMS core that addresses multiple access points, whether it's cable, fixed, enterprise, or mobile, and then once again, build the apps on top of this. So they're, they're actually leapfrogging a large amount of the, the technology that the mobile operators went through earlier um, going directly to the IMS core, uh, and we'll see more and more of that as it's going forward. All right, thanks. Uh, we had a, a great question come in uh, regarding E911. So with Volte traffic routing back to the home IMS, as you explained, how does location services for E911 work? Um, you know, this audience member has heard that this is a big challenge for Volte roaming. The, the real challenge is not from a standards perspective. This is, this is defined and very well understood. 
the real problem comes into what are the emergency services capabilities of the government, the, the state, the whatever it might be at this point. Most of those are, are very tied into the, the legacy core infrastructure. Um, they know how to uh, go through and, and have a tap put in place and, and to do these things. They don't really have a lot of the knowledge or the experience or being able to, to handle the, the new way of doing this. So there is a little bit of, you know, trying to make the new work with the old uh, until the, the old can be replaced by uh, the newer technology. So, you know, once again, all of the information is available. Uh, it's just a matter of can the other side receive it in the proper way and be able to act upon it in the proper way. So a lot of these things are being worked out um, and we'll see more of this as it, as it gets moved forward. But, you know, uh, the solution is there. It's really just an issue of, you know, I, I'm very familiar with the U.S. at this point in time. Uh, imagine upgrading all of those E911 centers all over the country, uh, you know, even in all the rural markets is, is quite a daunting challenge and that will take time. Yeah, that was, that was great. You know, the one thing we have seen is definitely a long way to go with E911 and Volpe, you know, seems like it would complicate things just a little bit more. Um, so moving on, so what percent, percentage of Volte deployments have SRVCC at this point? Really, all of them at this point. For the tier one operators who've moved forward on this, uh, initially I know that uh, some of the U.S. operators were not doing SRVCC. Essentially, if you left that coverage area, the call would drop and, and they would uh, pick it up. But uh, for my knowledge, all of them have deployed SRVCC at this point in time. Uh, in Europe, this was table stakes from day one. I don't believe any of the operators were willing to deploy Volte unless they had uh, the handover capabilities. What, what gets interesting though is we talk about the, the mixture between voice over LTE and voice over Wi-Fi because now you're talking about uh, going between domains as far as mobility. Uh, when you're in a voice core network and you're on the same IMS core, you know, really moving between IP accesses is, is pretty easy. Uh, it's when you start going between legacy domains and IP domains, uh, just on the voice over Wi-Fi, there's a tremendous amount of complexity there. Do you want to do uh, Volte to voice over Wi-Fi mobility uh, back and forth? Do you want to do Wi-Fi to Wi-Fi mobility? Uh, going along some of the lines of, uh, you know, the hotspot 2.0 and, and other things, Mobike, et cetera, that are coming in. So that's where I think you're going to see some, some real interest is, you know, your, your macro LTE access is now just one of multiple types of access that you can uh, have your customer come in on. All right, we had another um, Volte roaming challenge question. So of uh, the roughly 50 or so global Volte launches uh, worldwide, um, they're for the most part not interoperable making Volte roaming very challenging you know how can cloud hosted Volte help solve this interoperability problem really i don't know that the the cloud hosted would be solving this any different way than it is done today i mean typically there is an, an ipx involvement somewhere that you're going to have to uh, connect to someone you're going to have to have the, uh, you still want to have a lot of the topology hiding, et cetera, to not expose your network too much. So those problems are, are typically going to be worked out as you, you get your interconnect partner who's going to be managing, you know, going to the world. But as I said, a lot of this stuff is still very much in its infancy and, and they're, they're trying to think these things through right now. So you're seeing proof of concepts. Um, but I think we're a long way from seeing, uh, a lot of those Volte roaming agreements being worked out. Uh, you'll see them on a case-by-case -case basis where two partners have agreed to, to show something. But um, as I said, on a large scale, I think this is gonna take uh, some time to, to get out the door. Okay, that's great. So next question, uh, we have time for just a couple more. So next question, can you comment on the network flexibility for support of Volte versus HS 2.0? And what does this mean for roaming agreements? Well, I guess I'm talking about network flexibility here. Um, you have your, your, your Wi-Fi, 
which Hotspot 2.0 is really you know around the ease of the user experience, being able to not have to have the user engage to access a hotspot as they move from uh, hotspot to hotspot. Um, with the the Volti at this point in time, you know the ability to connect in. This is where we're hosted becomes interesting because typically when you're running a hosted model, you have connections pre-existing to really just about the entire world. And, and this does give the, the operator the ability to, to make those new roaming agreements and, and automatically have the, the connectivity established for them. I, I really, I'm looking at, you know, Wi-Fi, the, the 2.0 sort of solves one problem. Whereas the, the Volti, we get back to the Volti roaming, we get back to the, the IoT between operators. Those are really two different aspects of trying to simplify things for users so they can really get service anywhere, anytime. I, I don't know that I did a good job of, of addressing that one, but you know, I, I want to be very clear that while they're, they're, they're touching and they're related, they're each really solving different problems. Okay. Yeah, great. Uh, so next question, once you deploy Volti, how difficult is it to add on voice over Wi-Fi? Really, this is, this is a very simple add-on. The, the key components are, are the same within the IMS core. You still have your telephony application server, which should be access agnostic at this point in time. The, the IMS core stays the same. Uh, Instead of coming into a, a PCSCF, you're really coming into an access SBC. You, you don't need to have it the PCRF, and, and you'll need something, I said, typically that would allow um, non-SIM-based devices to be able to get registered and, and, and utilize that capability. And this is typically done by a, a, a SIP register to an external database. So the, the bigger problem with the voice over Wi-Fi typically comes down into the client side of things, which is... You know, while a lot of the devices have built-in voice over Wi-Fi capability now, especially the later ones, including Apple and, and, and Samsung, I know, the, the Android devices, you typically want to have that go to your network as opposed to going through whatever facilities they may have. Um, and typically, you'll go through and either have something that's downloadable app until you're able to get an, an embedded client in your stores and in your customers hands so uh, we spend a lot of time working with our customers today you know working them through how do you actually get your branded voice over wi-fi voice over lte capability into your your subscribers hands so they can use this and once again uh, maintain your brand identity all right thank you steve looks like we have time for one more question so you know looking forward what capability or service do you see as the next must-have after Volti? Well, this is this is interesting. I think everyone's been looking for the next silver bullet, much like SMS texting was a while ago. And, and reality is, I don't think there is a single silver bullet. What ends up happening is you end up being able to leverage building blocks of capabilities. As an example, voice over LTE is a building block. You can now send that voice call over the LTE, native IP, et cetera, um, over voice over Wi-Fi, whatever access that you may have at that point in time. But you may also have instant messaging. You may have file transfer. You may have some of the RCS capabilities that are out there. You will start seeing services that build upon each of the those building blocks and combine them in ways, whether it's a, a vertical that you know you go through and, and it's tying into their location, the weather, et cetera. You're able to push specific content to them. I think it's very clear right now, especially from the conference I was attending, that you know many of these guys' video is now half of their data utilization. Well, there's lots of different ways to do video. There's streaming, there's you know, multiple ways. If you're able to start controlling how a communication context occurs, maybe you move from having a voice call, uh, you call up a nurse because you've got some kind of a, a rash or something. You call up the nurse, you can't communicate what you need very well over voice, you switch and you show them a picture. Okay, well, they now wanna see it from different angles, so you switch to video. 
they bring in an additional doctor for a consultation via instant messaging. Once again, it's about building on those capabilities and providing that, that overall uh, user experience you're trying to give to, to the end subscriber because ultimately that's your value to your end user. It's, it's customer care and it's once again uh, letting them know and being able to feel that, that you know what they value and, and being able to bring that in a way that is very easy for them to use. All right, uh, that's about all the time we have for today. Uh, thank you everyone for joining today's webinar, Volti, Turning Obstacles into Opportunities. I wanna thank our presenter today, Steve Corcoran, Senior Director of Business Development at Mitel's Mobile Division. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Kyle, and thanks everyone for attending.